So today is the day. It's August 24th, and we're celebrating the 30th year anniversary of Microsoft Windows 95. 30 years ago, there were hordes of people lining up outside of stores in order to get their hands on one of these, a copy of Microsoft Windows 95. So today we're reflecting on the 30 year anniversary of Windows 95. And so what we want to do is reminisce a little bit about our experiences with Windows 95 and what it was like to install it all those years ago, and also focus on the aspect that's most important to us, the networking. Windows 95 introduced a native networking stack, something that was missing from the previous versions. And there was a huge amount of hype around the release of 95. Unless you've been asleep somewhere for the last few months, you no doubt know that Windows 95 is upon us. Microsoft Corporation today officially unveiled its Windows 95 computer program. Windows 95. Absolutely. We were both pretty young when it happened, but I remember it was a much anticipated release. And personally, me being a natural skeptic, I kind of tuned out of it and tried not to fall into the hype. But shortly after the release, I remember then having the urge to go out and get a copy uh, from Best Buy. And Microsoft spent a huge amount of money on the hype for Windows 95. They spent something upwards of $300 million on the marketing. They had a huge ad draped over the CN Tower in Toronto. The lights on the Empire State Building at NYC changed. Jay Leno was at the launch event. And then, of course, there's the famous Jennifer Aniston and Matthew Perry video that was surprisingly long. So perhaps like the most talked about uh, change or aspect of Windows 95 initially was the UI. The previous UI in Windows 3.1 of the task manager was not very exciting or fun to use. So Microsoft took a revolutionary approach with lots of design work in making the start button. Not only did they make the start button the center point of starting anything you're doing in Windows 95, they made the start button also on the keyboard. They planned this new key. It was released in 1994 on the first Microsoft keyboard, and then it became a thing everybody used. They required OEMs to ship Windows key keyboards uh, to be Windows 95 compatible. And to this day, any keyboard you buy is going to have a Windows key. And I remember back in the day, first trying out Windows 95 and I didn't really know what to make of the start button, the start menu. It was a little weird to get used to, but after a while, it just kind of became second nature coming from Windows 3.1. It was just a massive improvement, but it did take time to get used to. Yeah, for being such a talked about thing, the start button almost seemed kind of like a letdown because it was too simple to me, but that is the beauty of it. It seems simple, it's easy to use. And I use Linux as a desktop today, but I was just thinking and realized the way I've set up my Linux desktop is the same way that I got used to using Windows 95. I have the equivalent of a start menu in the lower left, the tray in the lower right, and my programs on the task bar at the bottom of the screen. And then another huge feature of Windows 95 was plug and play. It wasn't perfect, but if you've had to mess with IRQs and IO settings in the DOS age, well, anything would be better than that. It has wizards, like the Add New Hardware wizard, which often didn't do what you would want something called a wizard to do, but at least it gave you some, some hope that it was trying. It was trying to do something helpful. I especially like the message when it says, if there hasn't been any progress, please restart your computer. <laughs> yeah. Rebooting was a big part of Windows 95. It was a life. huge part, yeah. It seemed like almost any setting change you made in Windows 95 required a reboot. And of course, on older systems, that was kind of a big deal. I mean, it could take upwards of several minutes to fully boot up a system, depending on what software you had installed. Yeah, but if you're installing software or hardware and all it takes is a reboot, you were really glad to. it just took a reboot. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> And of course, Windows 3.1 had multitasking, but Windows 95 introduced even better multitasking. So this was a true 32-bit preemptive multitasking operating system. And one of the other big features of Windows 95 was long file name support. Um, so Windows being an add-on to DOS was 
previously limited to the DOS file name structure, which is a maximum of eight characters with a three character extension. So originally with Windows 95 launch, the file system was improved to support long file names, but it was still, still had DOS compatibility. And while it was touted as a 32-bit operating system, it still had some problems from its DOS heritage and maintaining backwards compatibility. So rebooting even daily was often considered a normal thing. Not only that, but reinstalls, right? So you would, I mean, I would say maybe every six months you would have to reinstall the operating system just because as you would make changes, as you would install software, it would just get very bloated and sluggish. And then really the only recourse at that point was a complete fresh reinstall. It was kind of fun. It was like cleaning your car out and then you, you're getting in a brand, it get, feels like a brand new car once you clean it and vacuum it. And there's just so many neat things about Windows 95 that I remember from checking out the screensavers to exploring all the different control panel options that were new and then checking out also all the included multimedia that came with Windows 95. Absolutely. And many you may not realize this today, just how hard it was to use networking on PCs back in the mid to early 90s. If you wanted to get on the internet before Windows 95, you'd have Windows 3.1, which did not ship with a TCP IP stack. So you had to use third-party software, which was either Chameleon or Trumpet Winsock. And you can imagine people were having a hard enough time even getting printers working. Can you imagine trying to explain to someone what a Trumpet Winsock is? Yeah, and for a separate project, we recently tried to get Trumpet Winsock working, and I thought I could just do it, but I, <laughs> I ran into so many problems, I couldn't get it working. Nothing humbles you quite like DOS and Windows 3.1 networking. Yeah, so we've spent a lot of time researching ISPs and thinking about the dial-up ISPs, and we've got to imagine Windows 95 was a huge breakthrough for the ISPs, since they could walk people through a much easier setup process to dial up to the internet compared to the way it would have had to have been done earlier in Windows 3.1. Because you have to remember, the users that were getting onto the internet were completely new to it. They were many times new to PCs themselves, and then they were definitely new to getting online or maybe even interacting with a modem. And so the staff at ISPs would have to literally walk someone through the absolute basics of how to do everything. It was often a thankless job, but they were partly responsible for getting thousands and thousands of people on the internet. Yeah, so I think we could debate which caused which. Did Windows 95 fuel the internet growth or was it simply responding to the internet growth? And I'm sure there's some of both. And we'd love to hear what you think. Leave a comment down below and let us know if you think that Windows 95 was actually driving the internet growth or just responding to it. And I remember some of the first times I got online with Windows 95. It was such a thrilling experience to hear the modem dial in, connect to our local ISP, and actually be able to open a web browser and navigate to a website. And the World Wide Web was still basically in its infancy back then. Even in 1995, there were under 25,000 websites. And while the web perhaps wasn't all that interesting after you browse a few GeoCities pages, there were still plenty of more to do. There were internet applications were more popular then, such as an email application, a news group application, IRC, FTP. And it was all powered by the two little green computers in your system tray. And I distinctly remember watching that little icon to see if there was any activity when I was waiting for a website to load. Because of course, internet connections back then were way less reliable than they are now. And if a web page was taking a long time to load, you would go down and look at the little icon to see if there's any activity. And then you could click it to see the packet counter so you could know if something was happening. And so what we want to do to celebrate and commemorate the 30th anniversary of Windows 95 is actually get a dial-up networking session set up on this Windows 95 machine and actually connect to the serial port ISP. Let's do it. Let's do it. So Windows 95 did not ship with a web browser. It was later bundled with Internet Explorer, but it does have the internet icon right here on the desktop. So we're gonna attempt to get online. Serial port, have an internal modem. The phone number here is this.
And we're online. It's thrilling to get back online with Windows 95 just like we did back then, which was unbelievably 30 years ago. We took some time to go back through the services we remember, from FTP to Telnet, and we even connected to an Undernet IRC server and reminisced with everyone about Windows 95. Oh man, look at the channels pouring in. <laughs> <laughs> a ton of them are appropriate to show here. Technology back then was simpler, and it felt more exciting and more hopeful than some of the doom and gloom that we see today. Just the simple act of signing onto the internet felt like a small accomplishment in its own right. What? Yes! We're yes. on! Yes! And that's just one of the innumerable things we remember about Windows 95. Let us know in the comments what your experience was like back then. And as always, thanks for watching The Serial Port, and we'll see you next time.